Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Succinct and Punchy. And this is Final Dreadnought 3. We are in the last episode of our casual playthrough for Lilac. Yay! We're almost done! I know. Sort of. I like this level. I like this level a lot. I think this is one of the, the, the other good level of the, the Final Dreadnought thing. It's probably one of my favorite levels in the game. It's definitely my favorite level to go fast in. It's got a really wonderful sense of flow. Like it's it's back to that that pacing of a. Uh, we had a fast level in Final Dreadnought One, and then we had a slow level in FD Two, and now we got another fast level. In FD3. Yeah, like this is this is kind of supposed to be the cooldown um, from the harder level that's FD Two, and especially the harder boss fight that is Giga Serpentine. Again, yeah. this is it's just it's just good pacing. Because FD Three is like is an easier level in my opinion. It's probably one of the easiest levels of the game. But it's very intense visually. There are like cannons shooting at you like crazy. And they can hurt you, but you know, they start at an angle that's probably not gonna hurt you very much. Just keep moving. You don't get shot in the face, it's amazing. Then you got these things that put you up to the max speed straight away so you can just run fast and go places. Yeah. And uh lots of open ground, lots of curved surfaces, which um FD doesn't have as much of. Just, it's about going fast, and that's a good thing. Unfortunately, the DNA cannons are here on stairs, and this entire section's a pain in the balls. I don't know what I'm doing up here. I don't either. I didn't know that was there until that recording. <laughs> so this is the giant hallway. I really enjoy this section, because it is a giant hallway once you get past this bulldozer. There yeah, we go. Yeah, you just... It's just one long hallway. You go really fast. Just kick a whole ton of enemies, and if you can keep the flow going here through really nicely, you can uh, you can go through in like one smooth motion. If you don't do what I did and boost completely backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even even as Mila and Carol, this particular hallway is just one of the most fun things to get really right when you're going fast. Such a long stretch of open ground with just slightly like slight dips in the geometry to get over. It's really nice. Crashed. Contrast the open ground with a little bit of upward movement. Get a key. Go back down. You know, it's 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 just a very nicely paced level. It's really tightly paced. Uh, except the music fades out. It's okay. Yeah, the music fades out and then loops really jaggedly. That's a uh, that is an engine thing. Yeah, it's it's hard to make loop points work in Multimedia Fusion 2, So yeah. And here is the plan. We have the floppy disk. This makes the computer <laughs> shut down for tech reasons. The Kingdom Stone. Oh, but it's Mila. She's getting stabbed. With something. There's green goo on the blade. This is meaningful, I guess. I... Well, she's shaking. Oh no. It's it's the serpentine thing. But with Mila. So... Stop me if you've heard this one before. Have you ever played Cave Story? Right, yes, sorry. Anyway, Monster Mila. Or however the hell she's called. I don't know how she's called internally. I, despite the fact that I think this is the easiest boss in the game, I proceed to undermine my own point by getting the shit kicked out of me during it. Yeah, she drops I... health, which makes it easy to stay just above death hit if you really need to. And her attacks are honestly pretty easy to dodge by just standing in a corner the entire time. Again, I undermine my own point by trying to be too aggressive and getting my ass kicked and finishing on like barely above health thing. But, uh, but otherwise, you just hit her in the head, and then she explodes. And you've killed the dog. Mila? She's dead. Yeah. Mila! Sorry, old yellow. Next level. Right. Enough of that. Incoherent dragon screaming. <laughs> Again, that, for the record, the speedrun part-time for that level is six minutes. I'm well below that, and I wasn't really attempting to go fast at all. Yeah, and again, we are it's it's fast level, slow level, fast level, slow level. And the the even though I think that the story beat with Mila getting totally owned is kind of weirdly written and acted, um in terms of like how it feels to go from highly active to uh, more uh, down tempo to highly active to down tempo again, I think that flows really really nicely. It's good pacing. Yeah. I think, like, obviously the individual elements could be more polished, but the overall structure is very sound. Yeah. For an action game. And this is the vertical level, where you go vertically. And we saw these disappearing blocks earlier in Pangu Lagoon, which is like an interesting 
I think at least. Don't give me funny looks. Story <laughs> implication of the like the technology being used. He's like he's using the same technology as the ancients. Ooh, what could it mean? Fucking nothing because it won't be expanded upon. But it's clearly implied. And 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 we get a little taste. We got a little bit of taste of that earlier when we we're talking about like what what brought us to Pengu Lagoon was that they recognized the material that the Robo Panther was made out of, and it's oh yeah, it's that. It's, yeah, that, exactly. It's not a relevant story beat, but it is a present story beat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is a giant laser. If you touch it, you die. On hard mode, that will just one-shot you clean. There is no questions. On normal, you might get away with it. On lower difficulties, you can totally get away with it. On hard, no. If you get caught in the laser beam, you die. So I'm going yeah. to be patient and not rush it. On casual, uh, the health regeneration acts fast enough that you basically just can tank every single hit. Yeah, you don't really die. Yeah. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, I like I like how different the structure of this level is um, I've that com one. compared to the uh, other levels. I mean, because you have a build up in the music, and you have a build up because you're moving upward. You're moving against gravity, and I like I like how that feels. It's it's smart. It's different. It allows tension to rise gotten out of the way of the laser so we're no longer at risk of sudden instant death if I accidentally put a foot wrong and we move on to the final bosses of the game. Red screen. Yes. Yeah. But not before they try to snipe at us. I don't understand what the health bar in the corner is doing. It fills up twice for some reason. Very strange. Isn't it, isn't it the limit, time limit to when the no fire goes off? No. ESP! ESP! That short wedding is so clunky. Very clunky. I offer you one final chance. Leave now. Can we talk about the fact Brevin is wearing like a metal cod piece? I like I like his folded leg position. It's very, very sassy. So this is absolution, but again, except he's faster and has like one new attack up his sleeve where he fires these slime rockets, which are incredibly fast and really hard to dodge in reaction, and the green blobs they explode into also do damage and it's like god cut me a break yeah luckily absolution one has less health and a fun little touch here is that that phase of the boss its health is represented by the green pillar on the left that's now empty and this second phase because he has another phase is represented by the orange pillar on the right as you do damage to it as i'm going to do right about now loses a block mm -hmm. And this is Brevin 2, who you can only hit him in the head, which means the height is just awkward enough that you can't really hit him while grounded. Nice I dodge! Mean, very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> you can dodge that attack by standing directly underneath him, but I chose to just kind of time the boost exactly so to do some extra damage and get him there fast. But nah, yep. I, I ain't waiting. Patience is for the slow. One interesting thing is that even though these individual phases are quite hard, um... You actually, once you, you from the lose, uh, if you die, you just get sent back a phase. It's yeah. not like you have to redo the whole thing. That line is incredibly dorky, just lost over it. This final fight on hard mode is bonkers, because the, he is incredibly fast and his pattern is totally random on hard. On normal, he has a fixed pattern of a certain series of action. On hard mode, he doesn't. He just does whatever the hell. And it's really bad, because he has this, this knife attack thing where he tries to stab you with the knife. And if it hits you, you lose, I think, like... Pretty much all of your life. I think it kills you in like three hits. Pedal, or, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's all of your life on hard, I think. And then it's like four pedals on other difficulties. Or I normal, anyway. But uh, I dodge around a lot. It's a very dynamic fight. It's all over the place. You use all the space. And the final boss theme is fucking kicky. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a good fight. It's Brevin's theme, but like rock. And I, I don't know how that didn't hit me, for the record. I parried straight through it. <laughs> and that was the final boss. Again, I make that look way easier than it is. Yeah, that's probably like 20 deaths right there for casual on, players. On first playthroughs, that I died to that fight like 20 times, and this time I can just do it without thinking. It's as natural as breathing. But yeah, that's... That's, that's freedom that's the final boss. It the ends quite plan. good. I like that fight. It is a good video game. Of course, now that we've uh, just bodied the entire ship, uh... Gotta get out of there, although we see Brevin's ship leave as well, so... Hmm. The three pixels they're in, and it explodes, with the Kingdom Stone still inside it. Fish and mailed. Fuck. It's all over. We lost. Freedom Planet ends on a dark note. 
<laughs> yeah. Christmas is cancelled. And Boo. that story beats aborted. Yeah, they, they couldn't actually bring themselves to kill this character off, even though she's very obviously meant to. <laughs> yeah, again, there's a lot of heartstring pulling earlier on in the story where, like, that's clearly meant to be that she dies. That's the that's what the development is kind of hinting toward. But I think, um, in part because Mila became a playable character later in development, uh, Strife decided that it would be ideal if he did not kill her. Honestly, I think it was probably for the better to abort that character, to, to abort killing off a character, because honestly, the the game did not benefit from the inclusion of like the dark torture scene, and I don't think it would have included, uh, benefited from killing off the the nine year old. It doesn't it doesn't fit tonally. It really doesn't. Turns out the Kingdom Stone is actually okay. Everything is fine all along. It can do that some for some reason, I guess, and this restores energy to everywhere somehow. Everything works out. So, uh, fuck it, who cares? It's, it's good. We win. It's, everything's happy now. Good ending. I like this rendition of the opening theme, by the way. Yeah, they both have rock elements to them, um, but this one uses a little bit of acoustic guitar and a little bit of string to give it a more mellow, um, laid-back, but still triumphant feeling. So we get to have the Magister, uh, kind of being waxing poetic about, uh, I don't know. I mean, we won. We did it. We beat the video game. Everyone's happy now and no longer wants to war with each other. But here still be monsters. Yeah, I guess I guess that's to kind of like say, well, okay, everything isn't fine, but it's it's gonna be fine, okay? Yeah, and here's like a vague sequel hook thing ish if they ever want to use that character again. He didn't die. He, he just sort of escaped. He's nowhere to be found. There's still much work to be done. We are not completely out of danger. But yeah, the Kingdom Stone. I don't really know how they're supposed to extract energy from it in this state. I don't really know how they were supposed to extract energy from it in the other state. But yeah, I was gonna say, does it matter either way? I guess not. Now, why would they put all these sequel hooks in? They wouldn't make a second game, would they? Yeah, that'd be ridiculous. Hmm. But they didn't. But the sequel isn't about Brevin. Who cares? What does it mean? On behalf of the Coalition of Planets, you have our sincerest gratitude. So of course, we need to send off for Torque because Torque's mission is functionally complete at this point. Why is Gong here? I, I don't know. He just stands there and doesn't change his expression at all. Also, it's a Carol X Torque ship. It's a good joke because the the Carol was here in the heart are on Torque's ship, and I also made a joke about it's like shipping. <clears throat> Ha! I actually think those. Are, I think I think the implication there is that all of those have been doodled by the different characters, like the Hearts, Lilacs, the Poor is Mila's, and the Carol was here was obviously Carol. Yeah. I think that's the implication. I don't know. It's a minor detail. I think it's cute. I still don't know what Gong is doing here. And his talk flies off into the sky. Credits. So yes, yeah, so did the credits. Video game. We actually, funny enough, despite this being a video game, we actually get to see the uh, voice actors first, uh, including the... <laughs> Very good. Thanks, game. <laughs> but yeah, in order of appearance, of course, because Brevin and, and all these guys, these guys were shown in the intro cutscene. Yeah. Those guys all got shown first before the protagonists. He has no arms! It turn, yeah, it turns out that all along Serpentine is just a normal snake. In a suit. Yeah. I like how the lamppost is included as part of Spade's picture. Yeah, I know, right? The the lamppost from Fortune Night, I think it was. <laughs> Wah. That's the guy who made the game, Stephen Dedur. Yeah. Username Strife. He also did bird guard noises because he's a dork. <laughs> Our favorite dork. Yeah. We love Strife. So here's you get to see the surprisingly uh, large amount of additional help Strife had making this game. Like, th th this game is still pretty much like a solo man effort in terms of the game design and the vision. But he had a yeah. shite load of people helping on it. Look, there's Lang. Hi, Lang. <laughs> yeah, he, he actually 
Strife basically had a hand in all of the parts of Freedom Planet. He had a hand in the writing, but also the music and the art assets. Um, he's not, of course, the only person who worked on those uh, elements, but, you know, it, it, it goes to show how, at least in terms of um, visuals and sound and gameplay, how having one person kind of involved in all of those things that you can really tie together a product really nicely. Yeah, I mean, it helped him create the, the game that he really wanted to make. Yeah. Exactly as to his liking. And I recognize a lot of names on, like, the uh, the testing man. I couldn't be bothered to call them all out. Yep. And if, if, you're, if you're familiar with this particular scene, you may notice the special thanks and the credits are kind of just a large list of shoutouts to people from, like, Sonic fan game development communities and what have you. Including Zio Ling, um, who was the creator of Lilac, Carol, and Mila, I think? Yes, the, that is a, she is a Chinese woman who owns the designs of the, uh, the characters. Lilac is still actually not owned by the man who makes these games, he just sort of licenses the design. Yeah, the rest of the characters are definitely made um, by, by Strife, I think. So. Yes, I'm pretty sure he owns all of those. And this is where it shows you all your crystals and times and deaths and stuff. Mine, flat, zero, no death. Ha! Deathless playthrough, wow, incredible. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, this is actually kind of fun because, especially if you're doing like a speed run, you get to kind of go back through all of your terrible mistakes that you made in a <laughs> level, or or all those amazing uh, runs you got. Good, in good, each level. bad, mediocre, good. good yeah, exactly. Eh. Seventy-five minutes. There is an achievement for this game for speed running. Like you get the speed run a clear achievement. You do it if you finish in under ninety minutes. This is not the speed run playthrough. No, no, no. I still beat the time. But yeah, join us when we get onto the speed playthrough. Thanks for watching. See you then.